hunter. My name is Jedediah Kowalczyk, and I've spent most of my adult life stalking through the lush forests of Tennessee, engaging in an endless dance with wild animals. I'll never forget that fateful day deep in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, a place teeming with life and vibrant greenery. It started like any other hunting trip, and ended like something out of a horror movie. My hunting buddy, August Jedlicka, and I embarked on our usual trek into the woods. We exchanged small talk and chuckled about how both our kids refuse to eat vegetables to this day. We followed deer tracks that led us further off trail than usual, but confident in our navigational skills, we decided to pursue. As August manned his rifle, scanning for prey amidst the foliage, the forest began to feel colder. Suddenly a pungent odor assaulted our nostrils, like rotten eggs laced with copper. August glared at me with disbelief etched on his face, echoing my own thoughts. This stench didn't belong in the woods. We continued onward cautiously until we came upon the gut-wrenching source of the smell, a torn-apart campsite littered with scattered belongings and splatters of gore. A chill ran up my spine when I noticed deep claw marks etched into a nearby tree trunk. You ever seen anything like this before? asked August in hushed tones as he examined the scene. Never, I replied, tightening my grip on my rifle. The environment seemed malicious now. My every survival instinct screamed to turn back, but some perverse curiosity kept me rooted to the spot. Hours later we stumbled upon an enormous creature feasting on a mutilated deer carcass. The beast was unlike any animal we had ever encountered. A monstrosity with razor-sharp claws and rows of vicious teeth protruding from its grotesque face. As the creature noticed our presence, it snarled in fury and charged at us with bloodlust. My hands shook as I panicked, raising my rifle to fire a few desperate shots. One bullet grazed its shoulder but did little more than enrage the beast further. It attacked relentlessly, swiping at August with reckless abandon. His terrified screams echoed through the trees while he flailed helplessly beneath the massive creature, unable to retaliate or call for help. Overcome with distress, witnessing my dear friend being mauled, and the realization that we were no match for this horrific entity, my instinct screamed to run before it claimed me next. I fired another round into the monster's side, a feeble attempt to buy time, then turned and sprinted deeper into the treacherous forest heart pounding in my chest. But the terrifying sounds of pursuit never ceased, and I knew that monstrous beast was hot on my heels. Desperate to survive in a nightmare come to life, I scrambled over roots and ducked under low-hanging branches in a frantic game of cat and mouse. Sweat drenched my shirt as I attempted to maneuver through the dense forest, willing myself to keep up with the fleeing deer. The massive creature was still giving chase, and I knew that if it caught me, I would meet the same grisly end as my friend August. As I sprinted through the underbrush, I stumbled upon a clearing where several hunters had set up camp. They noticed the sheer terror painted across my face immediately and grabbed their weapons, ready to help me fight off whatever had sent fear coursing through my veins. My breaths came out in short gasps as I tried to warn them. Creature. August. Attacked was all I managed to stutter between my shallow breaths. Before we could react further, the monstrous beast emerged from the shadows, its bloodlust evident by the gore-drenched talons that hung from its grotesque face. It snarled angrily at us, prompting the hunters to open fire at once. The creature roared in pain but didn't falter. If anything, our puny human weapons served only to fuel its rage further. With shocking speed and agility, it lunged onto its first victim within seconds before ripping him apart mercilessly. Panic overtook us all as we quickly realized that our rifles were no match for this entity. While every primal instinct screamed for survival, there was no option left but to run. Filled with desperation, I cried out, Split up! Go for help! Get anyone who can help us fight against this thing! We're not equipped nearly enough! and with those hurried words exchanged, we scattered in different directions like frightened birds in flight. The monstrous creature snarled in frustration, 
but chose one unlucky fellow as its second prey before continuing its relentless pursuit. The final cries of that hunter echoed through the trees while I ran as fast as my legs would carry me. Realizing how perilous this situation was, I decided to concoct a plan. I scavenged nearby materials and constructed a makeshift trap for the monstrous creature. The clock was ticking. I knew that the creature would not be far behind. Fortunately, my efforts to slow the creature down had bought me enough time to finish the trap. As the creature approached, I fled once more, leading it straight into my hastily constructed snare. The beast roared in fury as it fell right into my plan, becoming tangled and immobilized. With this brief opportunity of safety, I sprinted with renewed vigor in hopes of finding anyone else who could help me put an end to this nightmare. Soon enough, I stumbled upon a group of armed officials in the forest, who had been called in by some of the hunters who managed to escape from earlier encounters. They listened intently as I recounted the dreadful events and described the monstrous beast, though no one could determine its nature or origin. With haste and careful effort from all present, we devised a plan to eliminate the formidable creature that had claimed so many lives. Packed with superior firepower and teamwork on our side, we ventured back towards where I had trapped it earlier. Upon reaching the site of my crude snare, we found that the creature had broken free of its confinement, leaving traces of blood and destruction in its wake. Chills ran down my spine, but with a steely determination shared among us all, we continued our pursuit. The final confrontation erupted deep within the forest. The monstrous beast charged at use with every ounce of its unrelenting rage. It fought viciously to its last breath. Against our combined might and strategy, however, we prevailed at last, riddling its misshapen body with bullets until it couldn't stand any longer. Despite our victory over this unknown terror, we couldn't shake off the memory of those who lost their lives, August and the hunters who did nothing but attempt to protect those around them. We would carry the weight of their sacrifices with us so that their bravery would never be forgotten. As for the creature, its identity remained a mystery. But ultimately, in the wake of our harrowing victory, the uncertainty of what, or who, had spawned this monstrosity paled in significance, compared to the knowledge that we had somehow managed to defy such seemingly insurmountable odds. Whatever this beast was, we had faced it head on and won. Tomorrow, we could live to fight another day. I stepped into the chilly forest in Humboldt County, California, accompanied by the sounds of my heavy breath and boots crunching dry leaves and twigs. My name is Ernest Coleman, a skilled hunter, and my sole focus today was tracking down a ten-point buck that had eluded me for days. A faint creaking above caught my attention. Branches swayed unnaturally. I knew this place like the back of my hand, but something didn't seem right. I tried to brush off those thoughts, thinking it was just pre-hunt nerves. Having been raised by a single father, hunting was always our bonding activity. It provided a much-needed distraction from the demands of our everyday existence. As I walked deeper into the woods, uneasy laughter echoed nearby. The sound sent chills down my spine. People? In these parts? Shrugging it off as a possible coincidence, I continued onward. A sudden rustling near a bush caught my attention. I approached cautiously when suddenly, a man stumbled out from behind it. Please, you gotta help me, he wheezed out of breath as if he'd been running for hours. There's something in these woods. The terror in his eyes seemed genuine enough. What's after you? I asked skeptically. I don't know what it is, he answered, frantic. It's not human. It attacked and took my buddy. With a mix of curiosity and caution pushing me forward, we retraced his terrified steps. Jagged claw marks gouged the trees, higher than any bear could reach. It was puzzling. We stumbled upon an abandoned campsite littered with shredded equipment. The smell of coppery blood hung in the air. Remains were strewn around like discarded dolls. As an experienced hunter, 
I couldn't imagine any creature capable of this savagery. Fanatical whisperings about an unknown beast floated through my mind, but I tried to focus on more plausible explanations. After all, these woods were my territory, and nothing had ever scared me like this before. We continued cautiously, seeking answers. More claw marks appeared, each scarier than the last. Were they a warning or a taunt from this mysterious creature? Time seemed to lose all meaning as we ventured further into the darkening forest. Suddenly, an unmistakable growl reverberated around us. We froze, trying to pinpoint its source. The underbrush rustled again, and a hulking figure emerged from the shadows. It was an ungodly mix of man and beast. Muscular limbs ended in wicked claws. Its snarling mouth showcased rows of razor-sharp teeth. Its eyes bore into our souls with relentless hunger. The creature before us snorted with fury, dripping saliva as it reared up on its powerful hind legs. Call for help, I shouted at the terrified man beside me. His hands trembled, but he managed to grab his phone and dial what seemed like the emergency number. However, the reception was barely audible. Realizing that there would be no help arriving in time, we focused on doing whatever we needed to do to get away from this horrifying beast. Desperate to create some distance between us and our monstrous assailant, I scanned the area for a potential plan. There, up the tree, I shouted, pointing in the direction of a large oak tree standing tall nearby. We sprinted toward the tree with adrenaline surging through our veins. Gripping onto the first branch we could reach, we hoisted ourselves up one limb after another until we were about twenty feet from the forest floor. As I glanced downward, my heart dropped into my stomach as I watched the creature follow suit with its grotesque limbs gripping onto each branch effortlessly. In a panic, I looked around for potential weapons or methods of escape and spotted a large dead branch about five feet away. As carefully and quickly as possible, I grabbed hold of it and snapped it off from its connection to the tree trunk. Catching my breath, I glanced down again at our revolting pursuer. It surveyed us hungrily but with hesitation, seemingly trying to gauge whether it was worth continuing its relentless climb or not. Taking advantage of this brief pause, I began swinging the large branch at it with all my strength as it resumed climbing towards us. The creature snarled at me in frustration, narrowly dodging each swing of my makeshift weapon. Fearing that our lives were on a razor's edge and with my energy waning quickly, I mustered one final blow using every ounce of strength left within me. Striking it square in the face with a powerful, resounding crack, the creature froze for a moment before losing its grip on the tree. As it plummeted to the ground, its disgusting body crumpled under the force of gravity and crashed heavily against the forest floor. It let out a sickening groan before lying still. Exhausted and relieved, we started making our way back down. Once safely on solid ground, we cautiously approached the motionless monstrosity. Unwilling to assume that we were truly safe, we ensured that it was indeed dead and unable to cause further harm. The sight that lay before us proved that whatever this creature had once been, it was now truly just an aberration, a twisted mix of man and animal. After taking a moment to collect ourselves, we noticed searchlights in the distance accompanied by distant calls of our names. It seemed help had finally arrived in response to our desperate call from earlier. As authorities arrived, they surveyed the grisly scene in disbelief. They urged us to leave further investigation and clean up to them, trying to shield us as much as possible from any additional trauma. In the following days and weeks, Although life continued as normal for most people unaware of what had transpired in the woods that night, neither of us could shake off what we had encountered. I resumed hunting, but often found myself tensely scanning my surroundings in fear of being confronted by another nightmarish creature like the one that still haunted my thoughts. I frequently visited the man I had helped save on that horrifying evening. While grateful for my assistance during our ordeal, he couldn't help but mourn for his friend who had been taken from him by such a repulsive being. Life would never be quite the same after our chilling encounter. However, amid all of these nerve-wracking memories, one small piece of solace remained. Knowing that thanks to our quick thinking and determination, 
at least one of these twisted monsters had been stopped. Still, the lingering question from that treacherous night nagged at us both. How many more of these creatures might exist, prowling in the shadows of the forest? I remember that it all started while I was hunting in the woods near the Devil's Creek in Montana, hoping to catch a nice deer for some venison. My name is Elliot Schumacher, and hunting had been a long-standing hobby of mine since my father taught me how to shoot when I was a kid. As I walked carefully through the dense forest, my senses were sharpened, ears attuned to every rustle and movement. Suddenly, I heard an unfamiliar sound that made me stop dead in my tracks. It was a mix between a growl and a screech that sent chills down my spine. Instead of cowering in fear, I cautiously approached the direction of the noise, driven by curiosity and skepticism. After all, I'm an experienced hunter who's been around the block, so nothing much could surprise me. As I stepped deeper into the woods, following that eerie sound, I found drag marks on the forest floor that gave me pause. The tracks were an odd combination of something clawed yet humanoid, a fact that only piqued my interest further. While investigating this strange scene, a cold breeze passed through the trees as if something sinister hid among them. Just then, a terrified scream filled the air, seemingly coming from only a few hundred meters away. Panic kicked in as I realized someone else might be in danger and they needed help. I sprinted toward the scream despite any reasonable doubt washing over me. There was no time for hesitation. As I drew nearer to the source of the disturbance, I found what appeared to be another hunter named Gilbert Parkerson, beaten and bruised but miraculously still alive. Gasping for breath and visibly shaking with fear, he managed to say something about a beast that attacked without warning, a creature he said he'd never seen before. Its grotesque appearance haunted him, covered in coarse fur with animal-like features but standing on two legs, possessing long, twisted claws and unnaturally sharp teeth. I tried to call for assistance on my radio, but the signal had mysteriously vanished. Gilbert insisted that we had to leave immediately. Justifying it as a safety precaution, I agreed and began helping him up from the ground. The quiet of the woods was shattered once more by another bone-chilling screech, a clear sign of the creature's looming presence. Our hearts pounded in our chests as we hurriedly tried to put distance between us and this unknown terror. As we stumbled through the rapidly darkening forest, avoiding fallen logs and treacherous roots, Gilbert shared more about his encounter with the creature. Apparently, he had also come across similar drag marks earlier, but was brutally attacked before he could investigate further. He'd never experienced anything like it before. It had been swift, fierce, and nearly unrelenting in its pursuit of him. After what felt like an eternity of sprinting through the darkness, we found temporary refuge in a small clearing. Hope seemed futile as we nervously looked around us, sweat dripping from our brows despite the chilly air surrounding us. I stared into Gilbert's eyes, noticing the true terror lingering within them. We couldn't sit there any longer, so we pressed on, his arm draped over my shoulder to support his weakened state. We heard the creature approach. Its heavy breathing and harsh grunts grew louder and more persistent. It seemed to be tracking us, no matter how quietly we tried to move. Our only plan was to reach civilization again in hopes that the creature would retreat. Another monstrous shriek tore through the night, this time much closer than before. Gilbert looked toward the sound and gasped, It's coming! I wanted to call for help, but my radio still refused to connect. Was it the creature affecting the signal, or just simple interference? Regardless, it was clear that nobody would be answering our desperate calls. We continued moving through the woods at a pace that made my legs scream in protest. Battered and frightened, we were gradually nearing complete exhaustion. I knew we had to escape this nightmare before it devoured us. The creature's footsteps thundered behind us as it closed in, each step echoing with menace. It was getting closer. Our escape seemed impossible now, almost as if fate had designed it all to ensnare us. Suddenly, a realization dawned on me. The forest road. We had vaguely oriented ourselves in its direction earlier, but lost sight of it in our panic. If we could somehow reach that road, we might find someone or something that could save us. 
With renewed determination, I dragged Gilbert along as fast as we could manage, driven by adrenaline and sheer fear. Out of nowhere, an anguished scream pierced the air. Gilbert. The brute force of the creature had knocked him out of my grasp, the pain unimaginable as its claws slashed into his flesh. My heart raced as I thought of what I should do next. I knew that abandoning him would ensure my survival, but abandoning a fellow human being was something that I could never live with. Despite the agonizing pain in his voice, Gilbert yelled at me through clenched teeth, Run! Save yourself! His words resonated within me, but I couldn't bring myself to leave him for dead. I took a deep breath, knowing I was possibly marching toward my own demise. As I sprinted back to rescue Gilbert, the scene before me was brutal. The creature loomed over him, almost twice his height, and long twisted claws dripping with blood from their first victim of the night. Its body was covered in patches of coarse fur and disgusting animal-like features with powerful hind legs built for chasing its prey. But beyond all the terrifying physical traits, a deep-rooted wicked intelligence seemed to reside within it. It decided then and there that I would become its next meal, but hesitated for a brief moment as headlights illuminated the trees nearby, the forest road. The creature's focus shifted from us to the approaching vehicle, mulling over its next meal. Just as it stubbornly decided to end our lives, a SWAT truck roared into view. Startled, the creature darted off into the shadows. The officers helped carry Gilbert into their truck while assuring us that they had been notified of our incident and were rushing in to help. Relief washed over me as we were rushed away from those dark woods. We had escaped certain death by just a hair. I later learned that sightings of this creature had increased in recent months near those woods, destroying lives and leaving trails of devastation in its wake. Experts could only speculate about what it is exactly. Is it some undiscovered species? A hybrid creation gone wrong? The possibilities seem endless, but remain just assumptions as no glimpse or trace of this creature has been captured since our close call with it. Though we may never uncover the truth behind that monstrosity lurking within the forest, one fact remains clear. Life is precious, and we must cherish the moments we have left. As for Gilbert, he may now bear scars from his harrowing experience in that forest. But together, we will rebuild our lives, forever grateful for that split-second decision to return for him. I woke up feeling uneasy. My gut told me I shouldn't have agreed to do it, but my friends convinced me otherwise. In the small town of Pine Hollow, Hunting was a rite of passage, especially for someone like me. My name is Augustus Rigby, born and raised in this place, and my entire family were skilled hunters. My friends and I geared up at the break of dawn. The local woods were where we decided to hunt. The Appalachian Mountains made the forest thick and dense. Pine Hollow was nestled at the southern end of Lightning Ridge. As we ventured deeper into the wilderness, there was something off about the atmosphere, something that couldn't be put into words. The pressure built in my chest as I tried to shake off the feeling. From a distance, I caught a glimpse of movement through the foliage. Expecting a deer, I raised my rifle for a clearer view, only to freeze in shock at what presented itself before me. A monstrous figure loomed out from behind a tree trunk, towering well over seven feet tall. Its scaled body was covered in patches and streaks of dark fur and spiny protrusions. Enlarged eyes glinted menacingly. It had claws that looked like they could rip through steel. My friend saw it too, with Jarvis stepping back in disbelief and dropping his rifle with a loud clatter, which only seemed to draw its attention further. We were left defenseless as it made its way toward us faster than we could possibly escape. As it advanced, taking slow but deliberate steps in our direction, we pleadingly called for help on our phones, but found no signal deep within this dense forest. The creature circled around us, as if studying its prey before making an inevitable deadly move. Suddenly, and astutely aware of my surroundings, I picked up on faint noises that echoed through the underbrush just beyond our line of sight. Leaves crushed, twigs snapped, the sounds of something retreating at a rapid pace. Finally gathering a sense of hope, I whispered to my companions, There's more than one of them. Someone or something is fighting back. We need to regroup and get out of here. Concealing our fear beneath impulsive adrenaline, we hesitantly stepped back while trying our best to maintain some level of eye contact with the monstrous being in front of us. 
Unexpectedly, it screeched a guttural noise that sent shivers down my spine, and as more frantic sounds emerged from deep within the woods, pieces of a bigger picture began falling into place. The initially strange atmosphere that seemed to permeate the air made sense now. For whatever reason, we had stumbled upon something extraordinary, a veritable nightmare in the heart of this dying forest town. I'd only heard about such things through whispered rumors and old wives' tales, yet faced with the reality before me, I was left aghast at its horrifying existence. Without warning, the creature lunged off into the brush. Its unearthly speed made it impossible to track with our eyes as it propelled deeper into the tree line after its unknown prey. My friends and I stood there in shock, unable to comprehend what just happened. Something stirred within me, a sense of looming darkness and dread. I knew that if we didn't find our way out soon, this forest would become our eternal resting place. Clutching my rifle tightly to my chest, I led the group away from the path we had wandered near enough astray, now filled only with twisted horror and diabolical shadows. As we navigated through the forest, I realized that calling for help would be futile. The nearest town was miles away, and our phones had no reception in the dense woods. Our only option was to keep moving and hope for a way out. The forest continued to grow darker, and the gnarled trees seemed to be alive with secrets. The pounding of our hearts almost drowned out the sound of footsteps behind us. We refused to look back, afraid of confirming our suspicions that it was not one of our own. "'Go away!' shouted one of my friends, his voice shaking with terror. The creature revealed itself, a grotesque beast with twisted limbs, gruesome scars, and eyes that shimmered with malice. It was far from anything we had ever seen or imagined before. Its body, covered in thick fur of varying shades of black and brown, seemed to camouflage it within the shadows. It made an unnerving hissing noise as it approached us slowly. A sadistic grin bared its elongated teeth. We edged closer together, trying to protect each other, even though we knew our chances were slim. Do you think it... understands us? whispered another friend, never taking her eyes off the creature. I shook my head. No one could answer that question. We all remained vigilant as the creature circled around us until it finally leaped at one of my friends, clamping down on his leg with its powerful jaws. He screamed in agony as blood spurted all over the forest floor, his cries filled with both unbearable pain and immeasurable fear. The creature showed no mercy. It continued its relentless attack on him until he fell motionless onto the ground. My heart clenched at the sight of his lifeless body, but knew we had no time to grieve. I signaled for my remaining friends to scatter. I hoped that by separating, we might throw off the creature, or at least make it harder for it to attack so many of us at once. Darting in different directions, I heard agonized howls from behind me, punctuated by the horrifying sounds of the creature's claws tearing into flesh. Suddenly, I stumbled upon an abandoned cabin that appeared to provide a momentary refuge. Hiding inside the cabin, I knew that we could not stay hidden forever. The creature would find us eventually. We had to think of a way to escape or fight back. The room was filled with random items, but none seemed powerful enough to withstand the monstrous adversary. Minutes turned into hours as one by one, my friends were found and met grisly fates. My heart ached knowing that they suffered while I hid away in this darkened cabin. I listened intently to every noise outside. The tension was nearly unbearable. Time stretched on, and then, suddenly, silence. It seemed as though the creature had vanished as quickly as it appeared. I cautiously peeked outside of the cabin. There was no sign of the beast. The forest stretched out before me, its darkness replaced by the reddening sky above as dawn arrived. My chest tightened with sorrow when I thought about my companions and what they endured at the hands or rather claws of that twisted monster. As I stepped carefully through the woods to find my way out, I couldn't help but feel like luck might not have been entirely on my side that night. Though I managed to evade death's icy grip and escape with my life, it came at a steep price, the lives of my friends. Perhaps surviving this gruesome encounter wasn't just sheer luck. Perhaps it was the monster's wicked design, leaving me alive to live in perpetual torment over those I lost and filled with unending questions about why this had happened to us. Whatever foul beast now inhabited the forest remains there still, lurking within those trees, perhaps stalking its next prey. However, 
This ordeal has taught me a harsh truth. There are times in life where one simply can't fight back or investigate the unknown without grave consequences. Sometimes, all we can do is accept the mysteries around us and hope that we don't become the next victim of our darkest nightmares. I stepped into the dense woods of Smith Forest, Washington, a tranquil place where hunters like me found peace and game for the taking. My name is Lawrence Blakemore, a seasoned hunter from Oregon who'd been laying low after a messy divorce. I hoped the isolation would ease my heavy heart. The air was crisp as I loaded my trusty rifle and trekked through the thick foliage, searching for tracks. A nagging feeling began to creep over me like being watched. Ignoring it, I pressed on. Hours of stalking silently through the woods led me to a peculiar sight, an abandoned campsite with belongings scattered everywhere. I approached cautiously, taking in the unnerving scene. Shards of broken glass lay near torn clothes and hastily dropped cooking utensils. Standing in the wreckage, I realized that something horrible had transpired here. The thought of calling for help crossed my mind, but given that I was deep in the woods with no cell signal and no exact location to provide to any authorities, it seemed futile. As I tried to process the bizarre clues before me, something rustled in the underbrush behind me. The snapping twigs were growing louder and closer. Hunter or hunted, this moment of uncertainty pushed my heart rate upward. Turning slowly with my weapon at the ready, I prepared for whatever might emerge. A monstrous creature staggered from between two trees, unlike anything I'd ever seen before or could truly comprehend. Mottled fur peeling away from rippling mounds of muscle, jagged teeth protruding from an elongated snout, its bent limbs dangling unnervingly with each shuddering step toward me. My hands clenched around my rifle as adrenaline coursed through me. The creature lunged suddenly, and despite my surprise, I managed to fire off an accurate shot that pierced its shoulder, spraying dark blood across nearby foliage. The beast roared in agony, swiping its gnarled claws through the air in blind rage. The sight of this wild anger was enough to send me fleeing for my life, desperately seeking shelter. I stumbled across a long-forgotten hunting cabin, its windows long shattered, and hurriedly locked myself inside. I held my rifle close and tried to catch my breath as shadows danced outside. As night descended upon the Smith Forest, I waited in terror, the creature's vicious growls a constant reminder of what stood between me and freedom. Sleep eluded me as I strung together the pieces of this bone-chilling puzzle. The grisly scene at the campsite suggested that this monster had already satisfied a perverse hunger on unsuspecting individuals that had come before me. Maybe they were hunters like myself their fates sealed in dark crimson pools hidden beneath ferns and leaves. How many people had it hunted? If only we'd heard murmurs and whispers back in town, maybe we'd have been cautious. Determined to remain level-headed and find a way to outsmart the beast, I resolved to utilize every ounce of hunting knowledge I possessed. Lowe's cabin would either serve as a solution or a coffin, failure not an option. Dawn cracked through the remaining shards of glass before creeping across the warped wooden floor, a moment of fleeting calm before another day of terror begun. By the time morning sunlight began to peek through the cabin's broken windows, I had devised a plan. It was risky and bold, but doing nothing would only guarantee my grisly end. I crept outside, scanning the area. The creature was nowhere in sight. I decided to set traps around the cabin perimeter using my hunting skills. With wire snares for limbs and tripwires to alert of approaching danger, I laid out what would either repel or trap the beast. All the while, I silently cursed myself for having ventured into this seemingly idyllic forest without a proper backup plan. As evening approached, an eerie silence settled over the woods. I knew it was inevitably lurking, watching me from the darkness beyond the trees. My heart pounded in my chest as night fell, clouding my vision. Hours dragged by, and suddenly a sharp twang echoed through the woods. One of my tripwires had been triggered. The monstrous howl that followed sent shivers down my spine as adrenaline coursed through my veins. Hearing its raging snarl rapidly closing in on me, I climbed onto the cabin roof to make myself harder to reach. Mere moments later, it charged into view in all its terrifying glory a grotesque mix of animal and human features 
with an insatiable hunger radiating from its hazy yellow eyes. The creature circled beneath me and clawed at the cabin walls, attempting to scale them. The sound of splintering wood filled my ears as realization struck me. I hadn't planned how I'd defend myself if it managed to reach me. In a moment of desperation, I decided to call for help, dialing 911 on my cell phone despite knowing full well that even if help arrived quickly, which was doubtful, it would likely be too late for me. 911, what's your emergency? The calm voice on the other end prompted me. I'm being chased by some kind of creature in the woods. It's trying to kill me, I stammered. I gave them the approximate location before quickly hanging up. As the creature thrashed about, trying to reach me, something seemingly miraculous happened. A police helicopter's spotlight broke through the darkness, illuminating the area. Startled, the beast roared and retreated. Hope surged within me as I heard distant sirens joined by the thumping whir of helicopter blades overhead. The beast, realizing its odds were no longer in its favor, fled into the woods, leaving me both bloodied and shaken, but alive. Within minutes, vehicles approached as officers poured out, guns drawn. Despite my exhaustion and fear, I managed to convey all that had transpired to them. The authorities seemed disbelieving at first. However, disturbed by the realness of my experience and desperation, they agreed to search the area for this unknown predator. In the days that followed as they searched high and low throughout Smith Forest, hoped that their exhaustive efforts would not only reveal, but eliminate this vile monstrosity from ever wreaking havoc slowly waned. It was during one particularly disheartening moment when it dawned on me that despite not knowing what exact anomaly had happened upon our idyllic serum, somewhere within those dark tangled shadows lay its hiding place likely concealed in plain sight. With no other choice but to concede defeat at least for now, the authorities made clear their intention to pull their resources from further investigation, instead opting to concentrate on conducting more consistent patrols, promising better peace of mind for community members moving forward. And while most welcomed such news, I could not help but remain haunted by memories of those blood-curdling screams, agonized thoughts, unnatural cries echoing out against a still moonlit night, wondering if somewhere out there within the depths of Smith Forest lurked that very same beast awaiting only its next unwitting prey. I walked into the dense woods of Kettle Moraine State Forest in Wisconsin, rifle in hand, determined to bag a deer today. My name's Alden Whitmore, a seasoned hunter with years of experience who knew these woods like the back of my hand. The day began just like any other hunting trip, clear skies and a sense of adventure. My friends, Amory, Otis, and Fabiola, had all been hunting together for years now. I said to Otis, Remember that time we nearly got lost out here? Took us hours to find our way back. Otis chuckled at the memory. Yup, lucky we had Fabiola with us. She's like a human compass. As the day wore on, we stumbled upon some peculiar markings on the ground and trees. They looked almost like claw marks. It was too large for any known animals that roamed these woods. Uneasy about this finding, I suggested we head back, but Amari dismissed it as nothing more than an elaborate prank or a strange animal passing through. Every few minutes, though, uneasiness persisted growing inside me. The woods felt darker and more oppressive than usual. It was hard to shake it off. As we ventured deeper into the forest, we noticed that small animals were scurrying away as if trying to escape from something terrifying. With each step, our surroundings grew stranger. There were torn branches with gory remains sticking off them. What could have done this? Determined to find out what was causing all this destruction, we pushed onwards. Suddenly we heard a loud crack behind us. I swiftly spun around just in time to catch sight of an enormous creature disappearing into the foliage. It stood at least eight feet tall with long arms ending in abnormally extended fingers tipped with razor-sharp claws, its hulking body covered in an unnatural mix of fur and thick scales. Amari muttered, Did anyone else see that? She was visibly shaken now. Yeah, Fabiola whispered, taking a step back. Let's get out of here. We decided not to call for help because we didn't want to draw attention to our vulnerable situation. We frantically searched for the way we had come in but with no luck. 
it seemed like the whole forest was playing tricks on us. Ominous sounds emanated from every direction, making us feel trapped. Amari accidentally fell onto her knees upon discovering a pile of human remains just off the side of our path. Panic took over as we tried to figure out what type of creature could have caused so much destruction. As we hurried through the woods, we realized the creature was stalking us, staying hidden, but never far away. The tension grew unbearable. Every noise or snapped twig sent my heart into overdrive. The others felt it too. Otis pleaded with the rest of us to find a way out and leave him behind, knowing he couldn't keep up with his hurt leg. But no one considered that an option. We were in this together. Panic-stricken, Amari shouted into the darkness, What do you want? We didn't do anything! From somewhere deep within the shadows, the creature growled menacingly, as if taunting her desperate demand. The sense of dread growing stronger and stronger in my chest, my body shook as I could picture its horrifying visage lurking just beyond our vision. Otis kept trying to make light-hearted jokes to break the mounting tension, but failed miserably each time. Suddenly Fabiola screamed her lungs out as one of her legs was grabbed by immense cold metallic-like claws and she was violently wrenched up off the ground. Without a moment's thought, Alden took aim and fired his rifle at the cage-like shadowy figure that swiftly descended upon Fabiola from above with murderous intent. The bullet hit the creature with a loud metallic clang, making it release Fabiola from its grasp. She fell to the ground, sobbing in fear. We were unsure if the creature was wounded or merely startled, but we seized the opportunity to run. As we sprinted through the woods, our breaths labored and heavy. I couldn't help but wonder what this monstrous creature truly was. It seemed beyond anything we had encountered before, swift, cunning, and brutal. Though I wanted to call for help, our remote location left us without cell reception. I feared that even if we could send out a distress signal, it would take too long for aid to arrive. Our only option was to keep running and remain alert. We came across a small cabin hidden in the thicket and decided to seek refuge inside. Locking the door behind us, all of us tried catching our breaths as fear and exhaustion began to take hold. We quickly barricaded the entrance with any furniture we could find, a table, chairs, and even an old cabinet. Otis suggested setting up a watch so that one person would always be on guard while the others rested. Alden assigned shifts for everyone and took the first watch as we settled down, knowing that there was no time for panic. Hours seemed like an eternity during our forced vigilance. The night remained silent, except for Alden's watchful footsteps pacing across the floorboards. Our nerves were taut when Fabiola's shift started. She peeked out from behind a curtain covering a window, only to recoil in terror as she caught sight of those cold, metallic claws scratching at the glass. Everybody up, she barked. We jumped from our resting places as she searched for something to use as a weapon. Desperate times called for desperate measures. Alden handed her a fire poker while he took his rifle again. Suddenly, glass shattered beneath the force of the creature's powerful grasp. Fabiola fought back valiantly with the fire poker, trying to fend off its assault. The rest of us chipped in wielding broken furniture, all cornered in a small room. The creature continued its relentless pursuit, making every breath count as we tried to defend ourselves. It swiped at Amari, slicing her arm open and releasing a shower of blood. Alden spotted an opening and shot at the beast once more, again eliciting that telltale clang signaling it was hit. It reeled back, stunned for a few moments, long enough for us to make another escape attempt. Leaving the desecrated cabin behind, we careened through the trees still clutching our makeshift weapons. The creature stalked in pursuit with ferocity and malice coursing through its every movement. As dawn approached, we stumbled across a clearing where a small abode was nestled. We didn't know whose dwelling it could be or why it was there, but after knocking on the door and pleading our case to the unassuming inhabitant inside, we were granted refuge, but only until sunrise. The owner of this dwelling turned out to be an old hunter who spoke little about himself but appeared to know more about the creature than any of us dared ask. The beast you speak of, he began with scrutinizing eyes, is something that has existed only in stories among locals here a creature of unknown origin that has hunted these woods for generations. As we absorbed this information and came to terms with what we'd encountered, Alden decided that it was time to act, even if it went against our emerging instincts. With newfound resolve and under strict instruction by the old hunter not to follow him back into the forest, 
and risk our lives further, he set out alone towards town. The rest of us remained ensconced within the dwelling as constant unease grew during Alden's absence. Hours later, we were startled by the sound of a truck approaching. Looking through the window, we saw Alden emerge from the vehicle with a group of armed men. Our ordeal was finally over, leaving us safe but forever scarred by the harrowing memories. Each life lost to the creature's unyielding grip was mourned, anguish and sorrow lingering amongst survivors. Sometimes I find myself wondering where that monster slithers in the darkness, praying it never finds us again, and I do hope that one day someone will bring an end to its existence. I stumbled upon a peculiar scene in the Mendocino National Forest, California, while searching for deer during hunting season. Name's Frank Waters, and I'm a mechanic by trade, but dedicated my free time to hunting for the thrill of the chase. As I crossed a seemingly ordinary patch of forest, something caught my eye. A child's doll hung from a tree limb by its neck, accompanied by several more strung above me like dark ornaments. Though certainly odd, Nothing could have prepared me for what lay ahead. Ignoring the unsettling display, I pressed forward and happened upon an open clearing with a lone cabin. A faint odor of decay radiated from it, and curiosity got the better of me. I quietly approached the isolated structure and found it to be oddly silent. In nature, there is always sound. Feeling uneasy but compelled to investigate, I opened the cabin door and found it abandoned. As I scanned the room, I noticed scratch marks on the walls accompanied by dried blood stains reclaimed by long dormant cobwebs. A ravenous growl from behind sent chills down my spine. I turned to face the source and found myself staring at a monstrous creature standing on two legs, with sickly gray skin pulled tight over protruding bones. Its eyes were sunken and yellow. Jagged teeth dripped with anticipation as we locked gazes. I sprinted from the cabin into the safety of the dense forest once more, my heartbeat thundering in my ears as rage-filled cries bellowed from behind me. Despite my best efforts to outrun it or hide within nature's embrace, I knew deep down that this creature was playing a twisted game of cat and mouse, an experienced tracker hunting its prey. The abomination silently pursued me all night, letting out huntsman calls whenever it closed in. In one such instance, when I'd crouched among bush lupine bushes to conceal myself, out of breath and hands trembling, it screeched so close that I swore the menacing vibrations shook the forest floor. In those moments, only my instinct propelled me to flee once more. I couldn't call for help. I'd forgotten my hunting gear during the chase, and my cell phone had long since run out of battery. How ironic that a hunter like myself should find themselves on the other side of a pursuit. For days I navigated through unfamiliar territory, each night fraught with sleepless stalking. This cat-and-mouse game seemed never-ending, yet something about it amused my malice-filled predator. It took pleasure in allowing me brief moments of hope before making its presence known once more. I continued my hopeless trek through the dense forest, fatigue clawing at me while fear filled every fiber of my being. I knew this ordeal wouldn't end well, but I refused to quit trying. This was survival at its core. Only by pressing forward could I overcome my dark adversary and live to see another day outside these cursed woods. Suddenly realizing that I'd been holding my breath as I approached the edge of a cliff overlooking a vast river, it occurred to me. This could be my escape route. I quickly scanned the surrounding terrain for any sign of a path down to the river. There was no clear route visible. It seemed I had walked into a trap. Everything within me screamed in desperation, and I racked my brain for alternative escape plans. It was then that the creature appeared, seemingly out of thin air. Up close, it was more horrifying than I could have imagined. Its long limbs were grotesquely disproportionate, covered in rippling muscles that flexed as it moved with unnatural sway. Its hairless skin was unnervingly gray and rough in texture, like shattered rock barely held together by a mysterious force. The creature's face, well, what I assumed to be its face, featured elongated eye sockets void of any actual eyes. Revolting drool hung from its fang-filled jaws as it sniffed the air, searching for me with ruthless efficiency. I knew that if it found me now, 
there would be no escaping its deadly grasp. Remembering the fast-moving river below the cliff's edge, I scrambled as quietly as possible to the base of a tree and climbed up its branches. As terrified as I was, the idea of leaping from this height wasn't exactly appealing either, but my options were rapidly dwindling. A guttural noise reverberated through the forest once more, signaling my time had run out. It was now or never. The only way to survive was to make a leap of faith into the water below. Mustering every ounce of strength and courage left within me, I jumped from branch to branch at breakneck speed across three trees growing on the cliffside, making sure not to look down too often lest my heart failed me completely. In an instant, I leaped out into space and plummeted towards the river below. The creature screeched behind me in surprise but did not attempt to follow. As soon as my body shuttled through the freezing waves, the pure shock of it pulled me out of my stunned state, just in time for me to brave the currents threatening to drag me under. I fought with all I had, kicking and flailing at the rapids while my lungs screamed for air. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I managed to claw myself onto the rocky shore downstream. I lay there, gasping for breath, shivering uncontrollably from both fright and cold. But something told me I wasn't safe just yet. As my strength slowly returned, it dawned on me that I needed to find civilization and call for help immediately. If this creature ever found me again, there needed to be backup ready for immediate action. Pushing forward through sheer adrenaline and determination, I trudged along the riverbank for hours on end until exhaustedly stumbling upon a remote campsite with a group of hikers. The bewildered campers took one look at my disheveled state and handed me their satellite phone to call for help. Survival instincts racing through my veins, I contacted both family members and local authorities to share the chilling story of the creature's sadistic pursuit across several distressing days. I didn't expect them to believe it all at once. It was just too bizarre. But I hoped that if more incidents of this nature occurred, enough credible evidence could be gathered on this horrifying creature. Perhaps identifying its motives, or even finding a way to neutralize it, could prevent others from becoming prey as I had been. Hours later, as the rescue team finally arrived and air lifted my fatigued body back toward civilization, a small semblance of relief washed over me. It was minuscule compared to the haunting ordeal that would surely scar me forever onward, but served as solace nonetheless. For now, though, survival was all that truly mattered, for this is just what life had come down to, surviving the inexplicable. I woke up that morning with a pounding headache and a bad feeling about the day ahead of me. My name is Clyde Jensen, a seasoned hunter who moved to this tiny town near the dense forest in Clear Lake, Oregon to be near the woods. These days, I hunt more out of habit than need. After I had my breakfast, I put on my favorite hunting gear, picked up my rifle, and grabbed some extra supplies. My best friend Jimmy, whom I had met in town, decided to join me today. We walked into the forest remarking on some light banter about our lives. As we kept making our way through the woods, we noticed an unsettling silence. No birds chirping or squirrels rustling, just absolute silence. This should have waved a giant red flag for both of us. Instead, we attributed it to just being an unusual day and laughed it off. Nevertheless, we continued our hunt deeper into the forest when suddenly we stumbled upon something horrendous the mutilated corpse of a young woman named Alice, who worked at the local diner. Her body and face were horribly gouged, as though clawed by something massive. Nothing identifiable remained. We grimly decided that we should return to town immediately and report her death to Sheriff DeWalt. However, neither one of us felt safe calling for help on our cell phones. Dead spots are fairly common in these woods. It was starting to get dark as Jimmy and I made our way back toward town, when we noticed a figure lurking behind some trees along our path. We couldn't make out any details in the darkness aside from its enormous size, towering over us by at least two feet. Looking at each other with sheer terror formed in our eyes, knowing full well that running wouldn't be practical given the distance from town and sheer massiveness of whatever was observing us, we prepared ourselves for a deadly encounter. Steadying our rifles, we aimed at the cloudy outline of the creature stalking us, just as we were about to pull the triggers, 
It made piercing, inhuman, guttural sounds and charged violently towards us. Jimmy managed to fire one round directly into its abdomen as it charged. The creature let out an agonizing roar that resonated through our very bones as it staggered back a few steps, momentarily slowing its approach. This small moment of hesitation by the creature allowed us to slowly back away, maintaining our aim at its grisly torso. Every time the beast tried to staunchly pursue us, we'd fire spreading shots across its path to keep it at bay, all while gripping our rifles with hands shaking uncontrollably. Another hunter, Lawrence Palmer, who had been in the woods further south, approached after hearing our gunshots and came to our aid. He rapid-fired his shotgun at the monster's legs, but was out of shells in no time. Now, fearing for our lives while processing all the grotesque events that had taken place all in one day, the creature hit Lawrence hard swiftly from behind, blood spraying across our faces. I yelled to Jimmy, Get back! Get Lawrence out of here! Jimmy grabbed Lawrence by his arm, trying to drag him away from the creature. I kept my rifle aimed at the beast as it towered over the fallen hunter. As if noticing me for the first time, it turned its grotesque head and locked its bloodshot eyes onto mine. Help me! I screamed at the top of my lungs, hoping someone else was close enough to hear. The creature snarled and took a heavy step towards me. I fired another shot, this time aimed directly at its head. The impact sent the creature stumbling backward, buying me precious time. I scrambled backwards but refused to take my eyes off the horrifying scene unfolding before me. As I continued to back away, I tripped and fell flat on my back. The wind knocked out of me. At that moment, the creature launched itself at me with terrifying speed. I aimed my rifle once more and pulled the trigger. Nothing happened. I was out of ammo. The beast stopped in its tracks, sensing my helplessness. It bared its gnarled teeth and let out a low growl as it prepared for another lunge. Just then, we heard police sirens wailing in the distance, closing in on our location fast. The creature hesitated for a moment before giving an ear-piercing screech and disappearing into the dark woods. The police arrived minutes later, alerted by nearby residents who had heard our gunshots. There wasn't much time to explain what had happened, as they focused their attention on Lawrence and rushed him to a nearby hospital. In the days following that bone-chilling encounter, our small town was abuzz with rumors about what had occurred in the woods. No one could come up with a reasonable explanation for what we saw that night. Other than that, it was some sort of undiscovered species, or a severely mutated bear or wolf. Jimmy and I decided to keep our distance from the woods for the time being, ritualistically checking our ammunition before going out on any hunting trips in the future. Lawrence unfortunately didn't make it. His injuries were too severe, and he passed away at the hospital. As we mourned our friend and fellow hunter, we couldn't help but feel unease about the horrors that could be hiding in the shadows. However, no further sightings were reported, and life, albeit with an underlying tension, slowly returned to normal. But one thing is certain— no one will ever forget that haunting night when terror came stalking out of the darkness. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was miles deep into the woods of Greenvale, a small town in the northeast of Alabama. Hunting has always been a way for me to escape the mundane corporate world I lived in, that same world where as a middle-aged divorcee, life had become increasingly monotonous. My name's Kyle Anderson, and today's hunt changed everything for me. My friends had dared me to come here despite hearing disturbing stories of missing hunters. Some said they were attacked by bears or got lost, while others claimed something far more sinister, a vicious creature called the Greenvale Stalker. But me, skeptical as ever, merely dismissed these tales as local campfire legends. This one morning found me tracking deer through the dense forest. My boots crunched over twigs and leaves quietly, each methodical step calculated to ensure stealth. It didn't take long before I found fresh tracks. A strong sense of excitement surged through my veins as I followed them deeper into the woods. Eventually it happened. The unusual sound of a fawn squealing caught my ear like no other animal cry I'd ever heard before. In the blink of an eye, the sound ceased, and all was silent again. My heart pounded. This felt wrong. Wading through the increasingly dense overgrowth, 
my breath hitched when I stumbled upon something truly horrific, a scene straight out of someone's nightmares. A brutalized fawn lay dead on the ground before me, its body violently ripped open in a way that couldn't have been from any animal I'd encountered in decades of hunting. As repulsive as that sight was, nothing could have prepared me for what happened next. No more than twenty yards away was an animal unlike any other I'd seen before. Its grotesque form stood upright on two massively powerful legs that ended in hooves like hands. Only thing was, they were dripping with blood. It was covered in coarse fur, its twisted face resembling a badly mutilated wolf. Yet this thing was way beyond mere beast. Teeth bared, its deep growl echoing menacingly through the trees. I slowly raised my rifle, hands trembling, watching its claws stretch out towards me. Time seemed to stand still as I aimed for the most vital part of the creature. My fingers clenched around the trigger before finally letting the bullet fly. A direct hit. The monstrous animal let out an enraged howl. Incredibly, despite the impact, it lunged towards me with unnerving speed, throwing my world into chaos as everything became a flurry of adrenaline-fueled action. I barely managed to dodge a swipe that would have surely torn me apart. Instead, it slashed across my arm, suddenly leaving a searing pain in its wake. There I was, wounded and cornered by an unimaginable nightmare. The terrifying realization hit me. Calling for help was useless. My friends who were miles away wouldn't hear me against the sounds of wind and rustling leaves. With a strange blend of terror and determination surging through my veins, I prepared for my final stand against what I had once dismissed as mere myth. Knowing that calling for help was useless, I quickly tried to think of a way to escape the creature's relentless pursuit. I glanced around, my eyes scanning for any means of escape. That's when I spotted my chance, a cluster of fallen trees not far ahead. If I could maneuver myself through the tangle of branches and trunks, perhaps I could hinder the progress of this abomination long enough to gain some distance. Taking shallow, rapid breaths, I sprinted towards the fallen trees, while hearing the creature roar in fury behind me. As I approached the pile of timber, I leaped and scrambled as best as I could over the slippery branches, receiving countless cuts and splinters in my desperation. Miraculously, my plan seemed to work, at least temporarily. The creature struggled with its large form and powerful limbs to make its way through the same jumble wreckage that I had just hurriedly navigated through moments ago. It roared again in frustration as it swiped at the wooden barrier, further entangling itself. Seizing this opportunity, I pressed onward without looking back. My heart pounded in my chest as painfully as my legs wrenched themselves forward, pushing me past what remained of my endurance. The creature's roars grew fainter until it was nothing but a ghostly echo amidst the forest. Exhausted beyond belief, there was no other choice but to rest for a moment. Collapsing against a tree trunk, breathing heavily from both fear and exertion, my eyes desperately searched for any signs that my nightmarish pursuer had returned. Thankfully there were none. Only silence answered me through the thick underbrush and tree trunks. Unsure if I'd ever feel safe again after this encounter with such an unimaginable horror, one thing was for sure. There would be no one who would believe what happened tonight. The monstrous creature from before appeared to have been a freak, an anomaly that I would likely never encounter again. It left me feeling irrational terror for the unknown lurking within the shadows of mundane reality. As I made my slow and painful journey back to the safety of civilization, reality gradually returned. Painful memories of the night's horrors played out in flashes before my mind's eye. Climbers and hikers often claimed to come across strange things in their explorations, but nothing could have prepared me for this wild, unnatural beast. I doubted anyone would ever believe my story if I tried to describe the creature. Even if they did, it might only bring unwanted attention to the very thing that I dearly hoped to avoid, encountering it ever again. I reached the gravel path leading back to the nearby town. My sense of normalcy increased as the distance between myself and the sight of my nightmarish ordeal widened. The following days were plagued with fear and uneasiness. The gnawing questions about what I had encountered relentlessly tortured me. While passing by a mirror one evening, something caught my eye. An ugly scar on my arm where the creature had sliced through flesh with a seemingly effortless swipe. Were it not for this permanent reminder of what had transpired, part of me would have preferred to convince myself that it all was just a fevered dream. 
I never told anyone around me about what happened during that night. There was no need for them to carry this burden themselves, no need for them to fill their lives with dread, too. Instead, I went about my daily activities, work, home, socializing, becoming somewhat skilled at concealing the fear that still coursed through me on occasion. Yet each time I noticed a hint of something unnatural or unexplained, each time a lump formed hastily in my throat, or my heart clenched suddenly under some oppressive emotion without reason, I couldn't help but recall that monstrous creature still roaming somewhere out there in the darkness. Within time, the memory of that encounter slowly faded, as do so many other things. But every now and then, when I find myself alone in the woods or a secluded place, I can't help but look out into the shadows, praying that nothing stares back. Some experiences leave one scarred for life, both physically and mentally. The terror I faced in that forest will forever be etched into my being, a reminder that the world, reality as we know it, still holds unspeakable horrors lurking just beyond our comprehension.